Okay, so for the second part of population, we're going to group part three and part four, population structures and the demographic transition model with aging and youthful populations. There's going to be some terminology from the first section, so make sure that you understand that before moving on. We're going to start off with the uh, sex age diagram structures here and have a look at a few of the general things it can tell us. It may come up itself, but it's also a really good way of comparing countries as you can get this information on uh, all different countries and it gives you a good idea and pictures uh, what stage they're at. This is the UK which is a HIC and as we can see a couple of trends here. Um, first of all uh, let's talk about the age sex diagram. If you did IGCSE you should be familiar but if not uh, here's a breakdown of it. Male and female are on their own side. Blue and red and pink uh, kind of indicate the two here. Um, you have the country and usually the year is given here. So this is from 2018. We divide it into three distinctive categories and we'll be referring to these a lot. So when you're writing, it's really good to use the, these terms. So zero to 14 are young dependents because they are not economically active. They are dependent then on adults and um, yeah. Now obviously in some you know countries up until like 19, you're gonna be in school or university, so you can still be dependent there. Uh, but this is generally the age because after 15 in many countries, it's legal to work. So ages 15 to 64 are known as economically active. Why? Because well, they're economically active until 64. Retirement age at 65, but this isn't the case for all countries. Some countries have a higher retirement age some countries have a lower retirement age and also a lot of countries have different retirement ages for men and women. So uh, that's the idea there. And then we come down here, we have population in millions. Sometimes this can be a percentage as well. So make sure you double check and see. And it gives us a really good indication basically at where the country is. So it's good to be able to describe it. So how would we describe this? That it's a narrow compared the base is narrow compared to the economically active, which is true. And the male pop and female sides are quite even. Economically active population, so again, that is between uh, 15 and 64. So that area there, it fluctuates slightly. The largest group between 25 and 34, and then 45 and 54. So if you can actually think about the patterns, the age gap between them is about 20 to 30 years. So that's when a lot of people have children. So a lot of these people here in the spike are probably the parents of the people here and so on. Elderly dependents make up a large percentage of the population, even though it seems like it's quite small and it does start to go downwards very fast. That is quite a lot for any country. Here we see a notable difference between male and female. Um, for example, the males have 1 million uh, and the females have 1.3 million in the 75 to 79 category. So we can see the differences opening up, very big ones there in the 90s as well. So we can see females are living for longer in the UK. Give reason for the different type of population structure. So here the characteristics we're seeing is of a HIC or an MEDC. And um, yeah, we would see that generally birth rates are going to be a little bit lower than the economically active. People tend to have a lower fertility rate. There are low infant mortality rates, and this means that uh, people tend to have fewer children, or it's part of the reason they have fewer children. It's also more expensive to raise children, as children aren't independent economically at 15, usually in countries like this. So we also see other characteristics, so like the economically active, what makes it like this, a strong workforce. So this means that they're economically quite strong. There's a huge percentage working there, which is good a low dependency ratio. So that just means what's the ratio of elderly dependents and young dependents compared to the economically active? Because the economically active that are taking care of the dependents, right? So the dependency ratio. There is fluctuations and then we can see high life expectancy because so many people live uh, till they're in the, into their 70s and 80s. And that's probably expected to grow and get much bigger for this modern day population moving forward. And then we look at the uh, elderly dependents, long life expectancy, slowly narrow, narrowing, showing death through natural causes more than likely. <coughs> so uh, how to describe the features of a population pyramid? Well, this one here, again, we go into it. So economically active population, or sorry, the young dependent population then is very, very large with an incredibly wide base. It then becomes narrowed in the economically active and continues to decrease rapidly until we get up to our elderly dependents after 64. At 64, uh, or sorry, 65, all the way up to 100 plus, 
The population is almost non-existent with very few people living to be elderly dependents here. This is a LIC and is showing the really the low uh, expectations that you're going to be able to live for a long time. So a huge amount. Okay guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope that helped. If you want to continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section, and you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course, then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video.